It's a huge pleasure to be here in Aachen and I've had a, a wonderful 24 hours and it's been really exciting here. Um, the talk I've just given, which was trying to link in one way consciousness and dementia, um, one way of linking that is via this phenomenon which is not so well known because um, it's taken a rather special technique to see it in the brain and that are these so-called neuronal assemblies, um, which are large scale. Um, coalitions, assemblies of brain cells that work together for less than a second and then are disbanded. And the reason they've been hard to visualise is of course um, one needed special dye imaging to see that. Um, now if one accepts that that could be related to degrees of consciousness, we argue that the extent of a neuronal assembly, the size of an assembly, will relate directly to depth of consciousness. Then one could say in dementia where consciousness is still present but it's very different, how might that relate to assemblies? And what I'd like to suggest is that we know in Alzheimer's people become like children again, sadly, um, because they lose the connections in their brain, uh, which means that they can't interpret the world around them very easily and they take it at face value. So one could imagine that if you think of an assembly being triggered like ripples in a puddle by, let's say, a stone being thrown, if the stone is getting ever smaller, the ripples will get smaller. So it would be for an Alzheimer person, like a child, that is to say the consciousness will be much more modest, much lower degree. It will be there, but it won't be the same as um, a healthy adult human. Um, we're hoping that with dementia, at least we're challenging existing hypotheses. All too long now, for 10 or 15 years, there's been no new drug for Alzheimer's. And one of the reasons is because scientists on the whole tend to be rather conservative. That is to say, they're healthily cynical, but sometimes too cynical and they stick to the existing approaches. And we now know that that existing approach is not satisfactory in explaining all the things we know. And I hope at least our approach could open up an alternative. Whether it's better, whether it's the right one, is open for, for question. But at least it's an alternative to the existing dogma. It's an interdisciplinary collaboration. It's very important that we, as coming from medicine, speaking with people from natural science, from engineering, from everywhere and especially have the collaboration between Aachen and Jülich. But it's very important to have this networking and to see each other, to chat with another, with each other and to, to eat something with the other guys. So it's very important and we usually have very good ideas uh, developing from this networking.